Well, mailbag time. I think this might be a review item, I'm not sure. But we'll get to it. See what else this other stuff is. Don't forget, as usual, I'll put links down below for things if you're interested in anything. Go and check those links out in the description. So here we have some diodes of some kind. I think these were TVS diodes. I know I did buy some TVS diodes. The codes on these are indeed 1.5KE6.8A. So I think there's a 6.8 volt TVS diode, if I remember rightly. Pretty chunky ones. Probably not really meant for the project I had in mind. Yeah, they're bigger than I thought they were going to be. <laughs> and there were some other ones I was looking at as well, some like service mount ones. Basically what I'm thinking of doing is trying to add some um, surge suppression to USB and Ethernet cables. So USB, obviously 5 volts, right? Unless you're using USB-C, but I'm talking about USB-A, basic old USB-A, USB-2, right? But also for Ethernet, so I also want to put some surge arresting stuff on Ethernet cables as well. So I'm looking at that as an option to reduce noise on the cable. Basically what's happening is in the motorhome, I've got an Ethernet, which I've shown some stuff on my bag before, I don't remember it or not if you've seen it. But basically I had USB to Ethernet adapters. So you put USB in one end, ran through an Ethernet cable, USB at the other end. So you can run USB devices over an Ethernet cable, obviously you've got some compromises with that. Now unfortunately what happens is in the motorhome when I'm flicking a switch on my control panel to like turn devices on and off, it actually messes up the USB. And I think it's because I've got this Ethernet cable running directly along with all these other power cables and I think there's an EMF, like a you know, surge being emitted by the cables and it's getting into the Ethernet cable and upsetting everything. I think that's what's happening. So I want to actually put some kind of suppression on it now. I've put some stuff on it already. hasn't done anything. So I was going to build something instead and to see if I can get something out of it. Yeah, anyway, that's that project. And that's a long-winded way of saying I've got some TVS diodes. of them. USB, ah right, so I was just telling you about that surge issue. These are some little USB devices with a built-in surge filtering, or well, at least filtering built into them, so they're isolators. USB isolator. So how it does it I'm not sure. It seems like it's got switches on both sides. Looks like switches. Inductor pack, filter pack. So this hopefully will create isolation. Now if I can use these, that might even solve it. I'm creating isolation between devices. That might reduce the effects of it. I don't know how good these are. I've got four of them. I'm gonna put these in and try them out and see if the problem goes away as well. So this is another option. This obviously only work on the USB itself, but I also want to filter the ethernet because I think that's where the surge is getting into the ethernet connections. So. I did actually put some filters on those already. Didn't help. Okay, these are some little BGA um, stencils for doing reballing of devices. Basically, I was working on a MacBook. It's actually this one I needed. Yeah, this one here. I didn't have the right stencil for it, and I had to make you know make do with something else. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's a three or four pin. I think it was. Actually, maybe it's this one, three pin. Yeah, I think this is one I actually needed. And um, so yeah, I didn't actually have all these other little stencils I needed for doing DDRs and stuff. Maybe it's this one. It could have been this one. Oh, anyway, it's one of these. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't have the right stencil for it. I, I managed to do it. It was tedious. It took me hours. So it actually took me several attempts to get the thing to work and actually get to the thing reboiled successfully. I don't do a lot of that sort of stuff. I'm not good at reboiling. I don't do a lot of it. So it took me several failures before I was actually able to get a successful attempt. If I had the right stencil, that would have gone a very long way to getting it to work. The biggest problem I had was the stencil didn't really fit properly because it's got like a raised center on the, the um, DDR RAM chips. 
it's got the ball like if it look a side view it comes across you got a piece like this in the center comes up and comes back down again this area's got the balls in it this area's got the balls in it you've got a raised bit so it kind of sits on the pcb on the raised bit because of that it means it really hard to reboard it properly because you're not actually flush with the surface of the device which is why these have these cutouts in them so it goes around that raised section and so what i ended up doing was individually putting each ball on by hand there's 78 of them it took me a while so that's why i bought our stencils because of that pain i went through now i've got the stencils now i probably never have to do that job ever again i've recorded video footage about that repair so you'll be able to see that pain and that fun i went through to achieve that particular result bag inside a bag with another bag okay again same thing another set of stencils this one came with this little bracket thing now I actually ordered this at the same time as this I think it's has it got some more stencils in there I think it's actually got some more in there it's thicker so I think there's more options in this one now also got it because of this little bracket thing here this mount because you can mount the stencil onto it it's got a spring and you basically put a stencil in between here and the spring pushes the chip up onto the stencil and holds it all in place it's not perfect it works now it turns out i've already got one of these it's meant for some slightly bigger stencils but i got it because of this but i didn't really need that i just needed this or well, that one whatever anyway when you need the tools you need the tools as simple as that and this is also related to that solder paste silver mm. um, now this was stated as being leaded solder paste recently manufactured of course so it's got 12 months on it the solder paste I had was very old and really stiff I was able to use it in the end well kind of it did kind of work but it wasn't very good I had a lot of trouble with it and that's why I ended up doing solder balls in the end but I wanted to get some newer solder paste and this is supposed to be leaded solder I don't know if it really is or not it doesn't say that on the outside seems to be a theme going on here <laughs> um, what are these I think these are also related to it lidded solder balls excellent so these are real life brand as well I've got different sizes because the solder balls I've got I think are lead free solder balls which makes it harder so I wanted to get some leaded ones so real life again is a 0.3's so 0.3 now that BGA we do I think it requires 0.45 uh, some 0.35's 0.45's and some 0.4's so got a bit of a selection there of all the ones I could potentially need doing these little tricky jobs and there's quite a few in each one um, there's a lot of them in there this is probably a lifetime supply for me to be honest I don't do that much reballing like I said so if that doesn't work I can use these although these are probably better anyway in reality so we've got this thing here weighs almost nothing I think I've got an idea what it is already yeah um foam now people are using this kind of thing for soaking up flux apparently it works quite well so i've got a bunch of these these are the size blocks i've got i mean i should have got smaller little cubes or something but i thought if i get some bigger blocks i'll just cut them up or maybe you know use them a bit more easily but people are using these to try and soak up flux and stuff like that instead of using you know little paper towels and brush and stuff like that like I normally use I mean you still have to use a brush I suspect but I don't know next time I do a repair and I need to do some fluxing and clean up the flux I might try getting one of these and see if it does soak up the flux or not really cheap I mean it's just a bit of foam these weren't expensive I mean I know people are using these I thought I'd give it a go it may be good it may be rubbish I won't know so I'll give it a try at the very least 
I've got some packaging material. Okay, this thing here, which I think is a review item. In fact, I just noticed this. It is a review item. Let's get into this box. It's a bit squashed. Hopefully it's not too bad. The box is a bit squashed as well, but that's alright. So a little bit. Handheld OCR meter. So this is a new one from Zotec. Zoyi. Um, any information? Yeah, it does have information on the back. We'll look at this first. So like I said, this is a review item. I will be doing a full review on this. Check it out as much as I can. And there's information on it. So LCR meter battery test and LCR meter. They've got two different versions. The battery test one allows you to do internal resistance testing as well. So let's just have a quick look. What did we actually get? We've got this one. It's DQ02. Yes, okay, it's got a tick on there saying it's both. LCR meter battery test. They don't actually specify the model on here. So we've got multiple leads. These little ones with nice pointy probes on them. I do like the probes I have with these. Um, we've got some clips. Two different kinds of clips. We've got these little round connectors on them. And banana jacks. So banana jacks go in here. And the other one goes in there. So that's the LCR meter cables. Dual function thing, right? So let's get out a bit. So these clips here, which plug in, will be the LCI meter stuff, and these ones here, which plug into the top, will be the battery test stuff. We've got a little shorting link thing. I mean, it goes in, but is that conductive? Maybe it's for zeroing. Maybe it's for zeroing or something. I don't know. And we've got a USB C charging cable. All right. So yeah, we're doing a full review on this. So make sure we check that out. Just want to quickly have a little look. USB charging port in there. Yeah. Stand. Hmm. Yeah, it's powered up. Let's see if it turns on. Here we go. Ooh, red. Color display. Battery slow. No, I think it means slow mode. <laughs> Mid fast. There you go. I might have forgot to use this thing. Oh, there we go. Right. LCR battery mode. So that was in battery mode before. That's LCR modes. Go through the LCR modes and that's the battery mode. So that's using that terminal on the top. Okay. That should be obvious if I actually looked at the screen. <laughs> you can change the modes on that. Capacitance. Alright, yeah. Okay. I'll do a review on this later on. That should be interesting. Compare it with my other LCR meters and bits and pieces. See how good it is. It certainly looks nice enough on the surface. Yeah, watch out for that review. I'll link it down below in the description once I actually publish it. I could really use some more support because I don't have that many Patreons. I really appreciate the ones I do have because they help me to buy things and to create content for everyone. So that little bit of support, even though it's a couple of dollars a month for each person, it really does help. It does make a difference. It means I can buy test gear. Right? I'll save up the money from Patreons and I will use that as purchasing power to when I buy test gear to do videos about. Like I've been buying some um, capacitance tests and stuff recently. It really helped that, for example. The money from Patreon, half the cost of one of these capacitance testers. That helps a lot. I buy a lot of stuff in my bag, I buy equipment to fix and that sort of thing. So for me, it is quite expensive to run a channel. Other people may not have the same experience that I have, but this is what I'm doing and it costs money. I'm doing a thanks down there, just a one-off thanks down the bottom there. You can click that thanks button, right, oh, that's about there somewhere, I think. Click on that, you know, and give me a one-off donations even, straight through YouTube, but YouTube take a, a cut of that. I think they take 30% or something, I, I don't know. I could be wrong about the number, but they take a chunk. Patreon is better because it's cheaper, you know, there's more bang for your buck. You pay less in fees. Other links to watch down below. Subscribe over here if you're already subscribed, and there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel. Catch you later.